Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday thought, a friend of mine shared a scripture with me this morning. And I just felt really impressed by it. And so I really wanted to share the scripture with you and talk about it a little bit today. And this scripture is from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. And I'm going to be sharing, I normally use the KJV, but this time I'm going to be using the HCSB. And it says, So we have the prophetic word strongly confirmed. You will do well to pay attention to it as to a lamp shining in a dismal place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you should know this. No prophecy of scripture comes from one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by the will of man. Instead, men spoke from God as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, I find this, as a Latter-day Saint, to be a very, very profound scripture. And it is more beautifully read in the KJV. Uh, but I I don't know. I kind of wanted to try some modern English today. So let me know what you think. I find that a lot of times what people do, and I will confess that this is something that I have done myself. When re- when not even when reading scripture, I'll have an idea, right? Like, for example, when I was younger, I believed that everything that, that came from a Brighamite manual was definitely true. There's no errors in it because it was the one true church, and so therefore everything was perfect. And so when I would read something, rather than going to the Lord to decide whether it was correct or not, I would go and find scriptures that backed up what I was being told to believe. And I don't blame this. I don't blame them for that at all. This was completely on me. What I was doing was I was saying, I believe this. And to make that true, I'm going to go and find evidence to make it true. And it was funny because I'll never forget the first time that someone read something to me from the first presidency of that church that was basically saying to stop Bible bashing. It, I was like, Bible bashing. I'm not, I'm not Bible bashing. I'm, I'm debating. I'm, I'm trying to teach people the gospel. But no, that was definitely a correct principle they were trying to teach. There's there's no spirit of God in Bible bashing and using the scriptures to fight. And it took me quite some time to back out of that. I would fall into that trap over and over again. Like, no, I'm right because the Bible says this. No, I'm right because the Book of Mormon says this. But what God says is to love your neighbor. And so... What I eventually learned, when I finally, like, I don't know, became completely full of grace to a point to where I really understood and was able to move forward in Christ, I understood that if I was preaching love, if I was helping somebody deepen their personal relationship with the Lord, then I was using the scriptures effectively. Otherwise, I was just weaponizing them. And people do this to, to this day. I mean, people weaponize the scriptures against me, against the fellowship, against the Latter-day Saint movement, against Christianity, against the idea of the very existence of God. So we see this quite often. So how do we, as Christians, as Latter-day Saints, as Mormons, how do we use the scriptures? Well, if you have an idea in your heart, you don't need to go looking for excuses as to why they're true. Right. You just if, if that understanding truly came from God, then that is scripture. Whereas if you have a thought, if you have a theology, if you have an idea and you're trying to find scriptures to back it up. Then what you're doing is you're interpreting the scriptures for yourself. That's a personal interpretation. Now, that isn't to say that the Lord won't give you scriptures to confirm or bear witness to a truth. Then we run into a problem. What happens when I have something that I believe is true and you have something that you believe is true and we both go to the scriptures and we find different, maybe even the same scripture, but it speaks differently to our hearts. Now, whether or not it's a rational argument where you're just trying to philosophically prove something correct or false, that's an individual thing that we have to determine on our own. That said, I do believe 
that the scriptures can speak to us through the Holy Spirit on our level. And I'm going to use my favorite example, the book of Isaiah. When Isaiah was written, people read it and they knew this is about my life right now, the king of this nation, what this country is going through. So we have a level one. And yet, when Lehi took his people to the promise to their promised land, in reading in that text, in Isaiah, they said, this is about us. And they weren't wrong. The things that Isaiah said did apply to them. Then later, after the crucifixion, the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Christians took the words of Isaiah and said, these were prophecies about Jesus Christ. These testify the truth of our message. And they were right. Still later, Latter-day Saints read the book of Isaiah. And they said, this is talking about us in our day. And they were right. So we have four contradictory ideas within the same book. And sometimes it's the same chapters. Chapter 29 in particular. That's talking about Jerusalem. But it's also talking about the Lehites. But it's also talking about the Latter-day Saints. And you can look at it specifically for each one alone and it fits. It works. Why? Because when the Lord gives scriptures through the Holy Spirit, he's speaking to everyone that he needs to speak to from the moment those scriptures are written until the end of time. So you may personally read it a verse in chapter 29 of Isaiah, and the Lord may say to you, you need to go and do this. this. That's what this is saying. This is saying to you to go and do this. And it's right. What's wrong is when we use our own interpretation. I want to do this. I want this idea to be correct. I need to find something to back it up and make it work. That is an incorrect principle. And that's what Peter's talking about here. And I think that this is why the Kabbalistic point of view of scripture reading is so important. Because a lot of times we'll read the scriptures and we'll say, hey, I have a problem with this thing happening. I have a problem with the idea of Eve giving childbirth in pain simply because she ate a, a, a fig, right? I have a problem with the idea that only the Jews, only Israel gets the Torah. I have a problem with the idea that God is everywhere but everywhere worships a different God. When we read the scriptures and we understand them as the story of us, then we suddenly realize the foreign nations in the Old Testament, that's us. That's the parts of us that are still focused on our egoism. That is the interpretation from the Holy Spirit that helps us grow closer to the Lord rather than a personal interpretation that says we need to lock up our fences and our doors and not help anybody else because we're the only people that are good and everyone else is wicked, right? 
I could very easily say, I don't need to help my neighbor because my neighbors are the Canaanites and the Assyrians. But, but they're not. And that doesn't follow with what Jesus taught and what the Torah teaches about loving your neighbors. When we see the enemies in the Bible, Egypt, and the various other you know, wicked countries, King Herod, who sought to, to kill the baby Jesus, that's us. It's the wickedness inside of us. And that's how the Holy Spirit would have us interpret these scriptures. Because God wants us to build bridges and not walls. I can't tell you how many times I hear people telling me about how we need to build a physical Zion with big forts, lots of guns, and, and you know, make sure that we keep all the bad people out. That's not how Zion's going to work. I can testify to you that I have seen visions of Zion. The reason why people aren't going to come to Zion that are wicked is because they're not going to want to love their neighbors. The reason why they're going to flee Zion, flee to Zion, is for safety. But what's going to keep them safe and keep people from fighting Zion is the diversity of people. There's going to be a diversity of ideas, of understanding. They're going to see, hey, Right now, we're making a lot of wealth through war and pain and suffering. We've got to do everything we can to keep people away from Zion because once they realize how prosperous love is and how successful you'll be by helping other people and helping each other, it's the exact opposite of what the world teaches. I remember reading a long time ago that there was a problem when the British settlers, the, the colonizers, came here to the Americas because they would see the natives' way of life, the, the, the original inhabitants of this, of this continent. And they would say, this, this is a much better way to do things. And they would leave and they would they would go and join these tribes if they would have them. That's what it's going to be like when Zion is built. The Native Americans didn't have big walls and forts. That was us as we came in and colonized the areas. They took care of each other. Now, I'm speaking very generally. There were war tribes that were in the war there all they had different philosophies they had different religions uh, so I, I understand that that what I'm saying here doesn't speak to every every tribe but there was propaganda that was sent out to make the Native Americans look primitive to make them look like living around them would be undesirable living with them would be undesirable because they were trying to trick people into thinking that the British way of thinking was the only way. It was the best way. And we need to colonize these people and force them into to our way of doing things. And then they'll be happy. They don't understand that they're miserable. The people that went out there and saw them, they're like, these people are not miserable. In fact, I'm miserable. I'd rather be like them. That's what Zion is going to be like. When they send people to war against Zion, to war against us, they're going to say, this is a people of peace and prosperity. And they're going to want that. And they're going to realize it's not something that they can just take by force. It's something that is earned through love. So, brothers and sisters, this scripture from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19-21 this is a key scripture for understanding Zion because we need to understand that warring against people, weaponizing scriptures, using the word of God to prove ourselves right, instead of using it to get to know the Lord in a more personal way, it's not going to make us a peaceful and prosperous people. That's my Thursday thought, and I leave it with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.